Good evening, and welcome to Join the Discussion, a monthly show about senior health and wellness. My name is Madeline Francesi. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Development for Hebrew Senior Care, formerly known as Hebrew Healthcare. Hebrew Senior Care provides specialized health and living services to seniors throughout the state of Connecticut. Thanks for joining us tonight. I am pleased to introduce our, our guest tonight is Tom Atwood. Tom is a physical therapist for more than 20 years and is the owner and principal physical therapist of Better Balance Physical Therapy. Welcome. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Thank joining for us me. tonight. I have a lot of questions. We'll start with a basic <laughs> one, Tom. Tell me a little bit about your work as a physical therapist. What Basic. What is a right. physical therapist versus occupational my, therapist? My ba the basic, a physical therapist, I always say, is, is a movement disorder specialist. Okay. We focus on the normalizing motion. The big one is walking. That's the one place that physical therapists, that's the one component that most other d disciplines do not touch. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of things that go along the same lines, chiropractors, occupational therapists, we all tend to do a lot of the same things, but walking is the one thing that's specific to physical therapy. Okay, and obviously physical therapy is applied to all ages, but do you focus, for example, in children, adolescents, seniors? Right. I, I personally, um, I, I call myself a geriatric sports medicine physical therapist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ger uh, I, I Let's break that down, Yeah, we? I know. <laughs> I, Jerry, I, I have a training for the neurological component. Uh, I specialize a lot in uh, dementia uh, with Parkinson's disease. Because um, there are specific therapies exactly. there that we could talk about exactly. later. Exactly. Um, and so in general, I, I, I see all those, but I also have the orthopedic training. And you've got to understand how the orthopedic issues are going to impact you later in life. And fall prevention is a perfect example of that, and that's another area of my passion. So. Okay, well, we've got a lot to cover in about 28 minutes, so let's get going with this. The first thing I want to talk about is we're coming on to the flu and pneumonia season. Mm. And in fact, I think I heard today on the way over here in the car that the uh, Department of Public Health in Connecticut has already announced that I think they're about... 10 cases of flu yeah. in the state, uh, four actually in Hartford County. Um, especially with seniors, um, seniors who are impacted by flu, pneumonia, if they have COPD as an mm -hmm. underlying issue, mm -hmm. or even if they don't, how do these common illnesses affect functional ability and strength in right. seniors? So oh, let's start the, there. the most important is to understand that um, both pneumonia and uh, the flu. It's a respiratory issue. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is it's, it's going to infect your lungs. Now, whenever there's such a connection between your lungs and your heart that anything that's going to impact your breathing, anything that's going to allow you to impact your heart is going to impact your general uh, tolerance to activity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why something as simple as pneumonia is one of the things that's very, very dangerous and it needs to be taken care of. Um, the hospital, for example, where you, where you work, right, the is, hospital is, is, this is care. the type of thing that generally you go in, have pneumonia, get it treated mm -hmm. quick, and then all of a sudden something as deathly as that can be, be managed in a quick mm -hmm. way. Do most, um, are most people given uh, physical therapy follow-ups when they're usually, hospitalized? Usually, usually not for, well, it depends. It yeah. really depends on how bad they are. Um, on, on average, if you get pneumonia or if you, or if you get um, uh, the flu, very commonly, unless you're hospitalized, you're not going to necessarily get any therapy. Right. Um, it's only when you have more complications that you usually do. Uh, but that impact to recovery doesn't matter which, which age group you are, it's still going to take time to get back. Should you be stopping exercise, obviously, if you have a mild case of the flu? I mean, It's something that generally needs to be considered. A, a good rule of thumb is generally if, if it's in your head mm -hmm. versus respiratory, mm. usually that tells you that you can keep going. Okay. Um, but, uh, it's just it, in your head. Don't yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the um, other component is uh, you should not have a fever for about 48 hours. So as long as that, because that's the a common presentation of the flu is, is, the, is the fever. So okay. that can give you that impact. Now, again, with seniors, someone's discharged from the hospital, what kind of exercises would you recommend? Right. 
So what would um, you have someone do? The, 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 the most important thing is to get the endurance back. Okay. Um, and that, of the things that I try to focus mostly on is walking. Walking mm -hmm. is one of those things that people tend not to even think about. Um, they did a research, they found out you're supposed to walk 10,000 steps a day. Which is a popular thing now to right. measure, right? right? You know, when we were kids, you went out and played, no one counted right. our steps. Right. Now everyone's counting everything. Exactly. So. <laughs> right. And so those things being is that those over the age of 85 usually walk 1,000 steps a day. So wait, that 10,000 steps a day is true for all ages? That's for any age. Wow, I thought that was sort of for the active, healthy age. Right. I mean, the, so. the issue being is if you have someone that walks 1,000 steps a day, you're not going to get them to walk no. 10,000. No. But the issue being is if you have someone that's 1,000 steps a day and you have them do another 500, mm -hmm. you know, that's such a large improvement. And, co and, and conversely, if you're listening and watching the show, which I hope you are, <laughs> um, if you exercise and maintain your health, and, and do those 10,000 steps every day, Huge. sort of, when you age, it will be easier. Right, That's Correct? the, the mo that impacts you unbelievably. The major issue is your body's a beautiful machine. <laughs> um, it's a, it works on the use it or lose it law. Mm -hmm. And in general, if you don't exercise, your body becomes more um, prone to uh, uh, bone density loss. Mm -hmm. It leads towards poor tolerance to activity. And in general, um, all of those things lead down the road towards less activity and less. Function. Becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. Really, exactly. You know, the less you do, the less you do. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And so, yeah, that it, very important. We got to keep moving. Um, so, as a home-based therapist, uh, what are some of the exercises you recommend for your right. clients? Uh, one that's very simple um, mm -hmm. is standing and sitting from a chair. Uh, the thing about standing from a sitting in a chair, if you stand and sit five times. <clears throat> four times a day, the chance of you falling decreases just by four the action. Four five times a day, just getting up and down and in the chair. with maximal effort. The issue being is you should be able to do those five repetitions in 10 seconds. What do you mean maximum effort? You know, okay, so, go ahead. <laughs> so if you stand and sit, which let's put a situation of what I see all day long. Mm. Okay, yeah. You see that a lot. Right. You're, first of all, you're not balanced getting right. up. Second of all, yeah, so right. you're really trying to, to get on your feet. Be hesitant. Okay. In general, you're afraid you're going to fall forward, so you lean backward, mm -hmm. versus standing up and sitting down five times. If you do that, okay. if it takes more than 15 seconds, you're at risk for falling. So to understand that oh, ability, wow. it's one of those issues that something very, very simple can happen. Now, why does that indicate you're at risk for falling? Because does it presuppose you don't have the you, you quickness and you're not limber enough to catch yourself, so to speak? From, from, I mean, that, that, I, I've spent years figuring this out. Okay. <laughs> what is it that makes so, that the Some of it is the fact that generally the major muscle groups, you're working your thighs and your, your, your buttock musculature. Those mm -hmm. muscles need to be strong. The other is most people that have any hesitation of walking, they, the major thing they're afraid of is falling on their nose. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, the whole point is okay. as that they go forward, me. That wasn't as, my major as they go forward, <laughs> they keep their body forward. So if they let go, yeah. the only place they're going to end up is in the chair. And so it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy, as we said, and since because you're afraid to fall forward, mm. you push backward, right. which then makes it harder. And then there becomes the whole fear of falling aspect. Mm -hmm. And that, that leads towards all of that. Mm. Um, even marching in place is something that's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Doing walking activities sitting down and, can be do something. And people should continue to do these with the flu if they're not feeling... It, excessively tired, the fevers right. may be broken, right. maybe you're sitting there watching TV, Right. good time to start to right. get Right, that whole thing of just pumping your ankles, that mm -hmm. a action actually circulates the blood, which is going to get the body to be, be um, to, to get the white blood cells that you need to go where you are, get better oxygen, the tissues that need it, mm -hmm. um, clear out all the metabolites and the muscles that, that, that has been sitting there because there's no activity. Um, and then another interesting component is stand, just the action of standing and walking. Mm -hmm. um, they did a study. They said ba basically, if you uh, are bed, if you're in a bed for ten days, it takes four months to recover the bone density loss. Now that's true for again, we're talking seniors. Seniors, everyone. seniors, seniors. 
Um, so the issue becomes that it's not just the fact that wow. you have, you know, four months to recover the bone density loss. So the, those types of so aspects. So what does that mean, though? Okay, for the person who doesn't really understand, right. you know, knows the word bone density. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Basically, um, your bones in general should be hard and firm. Um, and if you think about uh, in school, I was using a, the example of a loaf of bread. You can think of Wonder Bread where it's just solid as can be, mm -hmm. right? And then you think about that really good bread that has the big holes in it, mm -hmm. right? On the outside, they look exactly the same, but on the inside, they have holes and pockets. Mm -hmm. Those with osteoporosis and bone density issues, it's like that bread with bones in it, holes okay. in it. So the issue is that generally you can snap a vertebrae sneezing. You can, mm. a lot of times the issue is, oh, I broke my hip. Well. Did you break your hip and then fall, or did the fall cause it? If you have osteoporosis and you put a bone in a weird position, there's a higher chance that that bone may just snap mm. just because of the forces strained on it. So if we can keep the bones denser and stronger, then it's not gonna necessarily break doing something something that you would think would be idiotic. Is there a point of no return if you haven't done any of these things? You haven't exercised, you didn't take vitamin D, you know, that you say, there, well, sorry, you reached you, the age, you're too late. <laughs> no, there's no, and, and, our, and this is the best part. The best part about it is those that are at that point, because their function is so small, mm -hmm. you know, if someone can walk 10 feet. It's an improvement. Yeah. That is the issue of being able to transfer from a chair to a seat, mm -hmm. right? So the whole point is, is that it's almost more important for that age group. Absolutely. Because at that age group, that's where we want to be able to find those functional changes. Um, not to mention the whole aspect of people who are getting there, oh, it's the end, and then they give up. Mm -hmm. When if they kept going, they'd probably feel better about what they're doing. Exactly. And that's, 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 well, that's what we're here for. So in a way, what I'm hearing is PT is not just something you seek out if you have tennis elbow or you have some kind of specific issue. You right. could literally get a PT referral to maintain function right. well, and strength right. and core functions. Right. And would you recommend seniors start thinking about that? I mean, we think about everything else. We think about what right. clubs to join, right. what movies to go to, what book clubs. Right. You know, when we get our hair done, I'll speak for myself, you know, <laughs> come rain or shine. But should we start to put together uh, not just a financial plan for our future, but maybe a physical plan? Plan for I, our I think that that's something that's really important, and it's it's something that is definitely an issue that people tend to seek help when mm. they have a problem. Right. There, there's a, an old adage that women won't seek help for their shoulder until they can't do their bra anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, that tells you but, though how. But that's that point: is people will not do stuff until there. And the other one that's important is people are so hell bent on not using a walker. Yes. That they won't use a cane to make themselves work better. And the whole aspect is what happens is you end up having a fall and the walker gets thrust on you mm -hmm. and then you feel even worse. Right. And more importantly, if a cane could be utilized, the strength and balance improved, mm -hmm. then the cane could go away. So the issue is you got to realize it as a tool. That's what we always look at. Right. It. And I think part of the problem, obviously, is, you know, if you were to look at me right now and say, Madeline, you should really start using a cane, I'd probably <laughs> pick it up and hit you with it. Uh, yeah. But I, I shouldn't. <laughs> I, I shouldn't view those accessories. <laughs> we call <laughs> we, them assistive devices. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to come up with a good name. Right. Um, there's something that's going to help keep you independent. Right. Right. Keep you healthy and right. safe. Right. Safety is a big issue. Right. Um, you know, again, and I know I have other questions and I'm, I'm veering a little bit, but I think our, our, my audience is used to that. <laughs> um, how about looking at your home, okay? If you have your if parents and you know they're getting into the 70s, 80s, but they're still very mobile and very yep. healthy, is that the time to say, mom, throw rugs aren't a great idea, do wall to wall or get rid of them completely? Right. You know, can we talk for just a second about the risks in the yeah, house? Th those people those age? are something that is uh, so important to keep in mind because not only do you have a situation where you have a house, mm. very commonly you have someone that moves from a house to an apartment and they have all the stuff from their house, which means right. it's unbelievably choked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the where therapists really look at is we're always thinking down the road because most of these people want to be in their home for the rest of their lives. Right. So the issue is if you had enough, and this is kind of what my measuring stick is, if you had enough space 
to move a walker, just enough to put a walker in a pathway. Mm -hmm. Not to say to use one, but just to have a pathway. If that's the case in general, if you misstepped, you'd have some room. Got it. A lot of the times there'll be piles of newspaper or whatever because it's in reaching, and then you end up slipping and falling on it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the walker's your guide for safe passage. It kind of gives you, you that adv advocation. The other one is, uh, I, my, my patient, I always think about walking. People say, oh, I hate these shoes. They make me fall. Well, the shoes don't make <laughs> you fall. You don't pick up your feet, right? right? And so I always advocate for people to imagine you're stepping over a deck of cards. Mm. If you pick up and step over a deck of cards, that's walking. But, do, you know, you're... you're all of this makes sense, but yeah. walking is intuitive, right? And is, walking is something you just sort of do when you're healthy and you're not even thinking about it. So as you add these elements of thought, does it make someone more likely to fall? Because you're like, oh, wait, wait, I got to go over a deck of cards right. and that's a rug. What am but I the, doing? The, <laughs> the issue becomes there's a hesitation to move. And so in general, they're doing everything possible not to step over that deck. The issue is becomes that little teeny shuffle. Okay. Right? And why the deck is so important is generally if you have to step over a threshold, mm -hmm. you have to pick up and lift. Right, exactly. If you go th over an elevator, if mm -hmm. you're going up and down. The other is the stairs. I think when we think about homes, mm. people have to realize that stairs, you're carrying, I mean, if you think about a full flight of stairs, which usually is 13 steps, mm -hmm. you're lifting your whole body weight 10 feet into the air. <laughs> okay, never right? thought about it that way. So the whole point is yeah. it's heavy work. So yeah. realizing having rails or understand mm -hmm. the impact on the heart, mm -hmm. that's something that's really important to understand. Maybe you need to take three steps at a time and break. Mm -hmm. But all of those components, that can really make the issue of someone who stays in their home happily mm -hmm. and not. I mean, you want to be happy where you live. If you oh, don't, absolutely. you don't want to be in a prison. It's right, not a and good you want thing. to be safe. I right. mean, exactly. you know, safety is such a huge component of aging in place. Right, um, right. It really is. Right. And if you can't be safe, then you yourself, even though you want to stay, you know you can't. It's right. time limited. Um, what are essential goals in physical therapy for someone who is seriously um, ill? Right. You know, is it endurance? Is it strength? Where are you on Usually it's that? the issue, whenever we, whenever we do an evaluation, we evaluate multiple factors. And in general, endurance is usually one of them. Endurance actually has a bunch of different components. Um, you have the issue of, you have to have the strength to have the endurance. Mm -hmm. You have to have the balance to have the endurance. You have to have the motion to have the endurance. So they all kind of connect together. Um, and our hope is to look at a specific goal. So generally say you had to be strong enough to say walk up a flight of stairs. Mm -hmm. To do that, you have to have the balance. You have to have the strength. You have to have the endurance. So we set kind of goals on specific things so that, that if you achieve that goal, that means that you can walk 10 feet if you can go up downstairs. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, we try to make goals in such a way and make it very personal, specific. Um, why, why would we have someone who... Uh, plays golf and have them swing something different. The mm -hmm. issue of you want to make it specific to the patient. They're more vested in that. E way. Exactly. So, okay, uh, an example. So if um, we have a senior who uh, has the flu and their physician um, decides that the hospital at Hebrew Senior Care is the best admission for them, um, direct admit, easy, simple, yep. doesn't need the bells and whistles, quiet, designed for seniors. Um, that tune-up that seniors yep. need when they have the flu. Yep. Um, when they leave the hospital, mm -hmm. and our hospital, um, they should be thinking about if they haven't had a rigorous exercise program or some kind of formal structure, maybe right. that would be the time on discharge planning to suggest to the family that right. you want to add in a component right. of this. And right. if you need to, hire a physical therapist you know, is a physical therapist almost like a trainer, or would you be going to a gym and a trainer? Like, where do you intersect? The, the, the difference become trainers and physical therapists utilize exercise. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that physical therapists understand movement a little better. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had more training in that aspect. Uh, we have the medical background uh, of most other issues. We know more about the kinematics, the specific mm -hmm. action of the joint. Um, so that the, the, there's more, um, we can bring to bear more, um, more education mm -hmm. that can, 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 especially when you have someone who's, uh, has multiple issues going on, 
right? I mean, in general, someone who has diabetes and cardiopulmonary issues and uh, maybe they've lost a limb, it, all of those components, you, we are, that's within our wheelhouse. That's where, where we kind of blossom because that's what we do. And that's, that's something different than a trainer. Trainer may not have the education to deal with all of those components all at one time. Uh, so maybe the natural order is you get your physical therapist, you feel yourself really, you know what you're doing. And then if you get a trainer, they can follow sort right. of the protocol. Right. That, right. You, you know, so in right. a way, physical therapists are setting the structure right. for, your, for your day in right. terms of how you're maintaining your body and right. how you're maintaining your strength right. and endurance. Right. Um, I want to go back for a second and talk a little bit about um, dementia mm -hmm. and Parkinson's and yep. some of these um, these uh, conditions that, that seniors are facing. And I know that uh, certainly with Parkinson's, there are specific right. uh, physical therapy exercises. Right. I LSA. mean, I, I run a I, I run a uh, Parkinson's specific exercise group in West Hartford in the uh, Starkle Road. And I should note that Better Balance is located in Hebron, Connecticut. So <laughs> you come all the way up to Hartford yep. to run come this. Back That's to my great, old West Hartford. Grounds. Right. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> The, uh, I'm, I'm LSVT big certified, and if anybody would like to see What's uh, LS uh, Lee Silverman Voice Therapy, um, uh, basically it was a woman with Parkinson's that couldn't be heard, mm. uh, and so they wanted to because say Because it affects your... It basically has to do with it affects uh, neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters in the brain, and you just, you're always a dollar late and a day short, or a day short and a dollar <laughs> late, whichever, with movement and, and, and production. So mm. in general, you move slower, you speak softer, and in doing so, you want to be able to move properly. Um, and so there's a specific protocol to treat that, and I was certified for that, and now I have an exercise group specifically to keep everybody Wow. Up, up tuned, which is I think one of the most important. How, is you have room in this group? Yeah, in West Hartford. Yeah, and it, ha, where does it happen? In yeah, the Starkle Seniors? Road, 15 okay. Starkle Road. Okay. Yeah, at the Senior Center. Okay. So, yeah. And so, now with dementia, why would you? Right. Why would you need physical therapy? Right. I know the that dementia like is a, that's a tricky one. In general, a lot of the times, the problem is that the body is good. The body may be perfectly healthy, mm. but the brain is not. So you end up in a situation where people will a either go into a uh, could have safety issues where you know they'll they'll go in to do something and have a problem that can be an issue. The other is generally those that generally have a, that have dementia. You want to keep them mobile. Mm -hmm. In general, it's a lot uh, m better for them. It's a lot better for the people caring for them if the the if the client is such that they can keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, that is probably one of the most important components. Um, with dementia, you have to understand, you know, you, you have to be able to give commands a certain way. Right, I was just going to say, is it understanding and communication, checking for understanding right. difficult? Right, and I think from of... my perspective, I mean, I, I always look at the movement. And in general, if you sprain your ankle, you don't think about limping, you just start to limp. Mm -hmm. When you see a demented person move, a lot of times they'll move certain ways, and then you know mm. maybe necessarily they have pain. They can't express that pain, right? But because they're moving in a certain way, then say, let's have a look, and dealing with the pain, improving joint motion, improve specific muscle function, mm -hmm. um, repetitive function. Now, that's an interesting thing with dementia is that generally, if you can get them to repeat a movement that's normal over and over again, then that becomes their normal. Mm. And, it, and that's something that's important because if you can repeat it, then it keeps going. Okay. So you, there's, <laughs> how has physical therapy changed since you were educated? I mean, I'm sure in your career you've seen an enormous. Right. I mean, when you graduated, <laughs> yeah. Parkinson's certainly was, was occurring, but right. not connected. It's not. It's, right? There, I mean, physical therapy has become so much more part of the entire care plan. The, the, the big thing is, is that it, over the past, I don't know, 10 years, more than that, the, uh, People, when I graduate, I graduate with a BS in, in physical therapy. Now you graduate with a DPT, a doctor of physical therapy. Oh my gosh. Um, so it's a six and a half year program. Mm. Um, we're trying to become much more autonomous. In the state of Connecticut, you can have direct, uh, direct access. You can go to a physical therapist and have physical therapy evaluation and treatment without a doctor's referral. Oh, really? This is something that we're working on. You know, okay. it, it's a whole aspect of the autonomy, say, uh, I mean, a chiropractor. Chiropractor mm -hmm. is a doctor of chiropractic medicine. 
not a MD. Right. But they can do x-rays, they can do a bunch of different things that we cannot do. Mm -hmm. So the issue is we're trying to get to that point of that we, we can do a lot more. Um, of course, the insurance world is what's driving a lot of our yes. world, yes. Um, which I personally, <laughs> ugh, I just like fixing people. <laughs> well. But it, it, that's, the, yeah, we're just dividing, finding new ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can do anything from pediatrics to geriatrics to uh, women's health. We have, we have all of that training. Mm -hmm. it's, it, that's the fun part is that you can treat anything any day. And you're right. Your, your job certainly is not boring. You get no. to meet a, a, a variety of right. people, but also a variety of, of ailments, so to speak. Correct. And it must be very gratifying oh, it's fantastic. to be able to help somebody, I'm sure, um, who has trouble getting around. because. Right. If you are not mobile, right. then so much of life is exactly. difficult. Isolation, especially for seniors, research right. indicates that an isolated senior equals 15 cigarettes a day. Right. So right. isolation is not, not. Uh, uh, is not acceptable Correct. and is something you have to keep you know, uh, your watch out for right. and make sure we can do what we can. I know we're coming down to um, the end of the show already. Right. Um, I want to ask you a few more questions. Um, I like to ask every guest I have mm -hmm. um, their three tips in terms of their own knowledge, their own profession, and I always link moms to it because <laughs> if you wouldn't tell your mother the three most important things, who would you tell? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so as you think about health and aging and movement, what are, do you think are the three most important things to remember? I, th I think in general, um, continual walking is important. How many miles? I mean, does it matter? At I know this you point, said in the is just keep walking. I mean, I think in general, the more you can do it, the better. Is there a, is there like a, someone who walks two miles a day? Like, is there a benchmark? I think you have to think about it in the sense of the say that someone who has a spinal stenosis or situation where they back pain. The point being is, if you can walk a hundred feet and you're pain free, mm -hmm. well, keep walking a hundred feet and taking breaks. Okay. Um, the major reason I want that is also uh, challenge your balance. I think people don't do that. That's important. So pretend to fall. In the sense of if, <laughs> you, were, if, though, you, were, right? <laughs> if you were going to fall, mm -hmm. how do you control your body to correct for it? And that kind of is a lot of the training I've been focused on is there's a lot of aspects to that. Okay, what are your other two tips? Um, let's see. The other one is uh, walk long, big. People okay. tend to walk with the shortest steps possible. Okay, so um, make your stride I, long. Exactly. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I think the issue is focused on what you're trying to achieve. Most people tend to get fearful about what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. If you're walking, it's, it's, it's amazing to see a Parkinson's patient. I say, go walk. You're going to make it from here to there in eight steps. And they make it there in 16. Mm -hmm. well, I know they're not focused on making it in 18. Mm -hmm. eight. But then we work on it, and all of a sudden they do it in six. It's the issue of focus on the task. We could go on and right. on. I have to wrap up. <laughs> I am so glad you were able to join us today Thanks. again. Tom Atwood from Better Balance Physical Therapy. It has been filled with important information. <laughs> I want to thank you for joining us again. I'll see you next month. Again, as Madeline Francesi on behalf of Hebrew Senior Care, thank you.